And today we're going to have a look at a new kit from Academy, uh, 12586, the Martin Mariner. So this kit from Academy uh, is actually the Minicraft moulds. Now Minicraft, uh, as a modelling company, went out of business a couple of years ago. Their moulds have started to resurface primarily through Academy, and Academy have cleaned them up. They've done um, a really good job at reproducing what is um, a good model, um, but at a quality price that we would expect from Academy. So getting our hands on a Martin Mariner was really, really uh, good for us um, for the simple reason that the Royal Australian Air Force used this aircraft during the Second World War. This really nicely complements our Catalina. Uh, and what we've done obviously is we've put Australian markings into the box. Um, there's lots and lots of options in this kit. So let's crack it open. Let's have a look what you're gonna get for your money. So here we've got the kit, as you can see, nice, glossy and attractive uh, box art. Nice, sturdy top opening box, which we'll take open. And then what have we got? There's three, four, five, six, seven sprues in three individual bags. We've got one, two instruction booklets. We've got all the standard safety material that's included with kits nowadays. We've got the kit decals, which also includes some really nice masks. There's a lot of transparent parts on this kit uh, with the cockpit windows, etc. And Academy kindly give you the masks to do all that. So that's awesome. And then the other thing that we've included here at Hobbies Australia is another set of markings for the Royal Australian Air Force. And there we have one, two sheets of decals. Now the scale of this model is 172nd scale. Um, so as I said, it's gonna stand nicely in a collection alongside a, a Catalina, maybe a short Sunderland. Um, you know, really, really gonna look good. Minicraft were a brand that's been around for, had been around for quite a, a number of years and they really did make some very, very nice kits. Uh, a lot of refined detail and this is what we're seeing here. Look, very, very nicely rendered, clean, crisp. Yeah, there are some large attachment points, but there's also some very large parts here. Okay, there's the main fuselage, single piece, panel lines, some subtle rivets. As we can see, lots of windows. We've got here things like the floats, uh, engines. We've got the, uh, the wheel, undercarriage bays, that type of thing. We've got here the big gull wing. As you can see there, lots and lots of panel lines, fine engraving, very nicely done. We've got the flight deck. You know, these are some really, very, very nicely done parts here. The moulding is very good, flash free. So here's a, a bit of a close up of some of the panel lines there that we can see on the wing tops. Big gull wing section. Very, very nicely done. Um, for a, a kit that's, I think it's about 15, 20 years old and there's been lots and lots of advancements in mould technology during that time, it's very, very nicely done. Still really holds its own. Underside of the wings, the recesses for the uh, the float supports, the float struts. We've got uh, flaps, we've got landing gear components, we've got the tail fin assembly. Interestingly enough on the Martin Mariner, the actual bomb bays uh, for depth charges for bombs, etc., were actually here forming part of the engine nacelle, which was something very, very unique. Look, this is a very, very sleek looking aircraft. I think this is gonna build up exceptionally well. Plowing right along, we've got uh, main wheels, we've got the nose wheel. Two options for various propeller types, either three or four blade. So you're really going to need to do um, your homework on this to make sure that you get uh, the most accurate airframe uh, built out of the box. But uh, we've got two of these sprues. And um, yeah, again, you know, no flash. Looks very, very nice in 172nd. Part count isn't high, um, but what is there is crisp, is clean. Uh, the attention to detail is very nice. Just wanna have a look here at the transparent parts. Uh, as I pointed out, and we'll have a look at a little bit more in depth in a moment, the uh, masks that are supplied with the kit. Um, let's put that pen underneath there. But look, the clarity of the transparent parts here is really, really nice. So using something like Future Furniture Polish or from Deluxe Materials, looks like glass to increase the clarity of these parts is gonna work very, very well. And then of course, with careful masking, using the masks provided, you'll be able to get all the various window frames, etc., uh, painted on, and it's gonna look very, very nice. So of course, with any sort of model, you really can't build it without the instructions. Uh, Academy have given us two booklets for this model. 
um, because of the various construction steps that are involved. So let's have a quick look through these. Uh, manual number one, we've got the various paint callouts uh, by brand. Uh, pretty straightforward, Humbrol, GSI, we've got Life Color, Testers, Ravel, Vallejo are uh, listed. The instruction sequence is fairly straightforward. As we can see here uh, in the cockpit, there's lots and lots of detail and because of that nice, big, clear canopy, we're going to be able to see a lot of that uh, of what's going on on the flight deck. So careful painting, uh, making sure you've done your research, get your colour call out right, etc, etc, is going to pay dividends. Now what we've got here is the, uh, the mask layout. So that's the numbering sequence, that's the sheet, so it's just a matter of carefully removing these from the sheet. Now hopefully you'll be able to get a, a good view of this, but what we've got there is the, the layout and the numbering of the masks. There's the actual mask sheet. So you'll remove those from the sheet, put them down on the transparent part, maybe burnish them down with a, with a toothpick to make sure there's no air underneath it, etc., etc., and then very carefully paint from there. But look, you know, little things like this, attention to detail that Academy is providing from the box, that's very, very nice. Okay, as you can see here, instructions follow a very logical sequence, and I'll slide these across. Hopefully, you'll be able to see these. Uh, we've got internal uh, Bombay detail, which is really nice. This must have been a, an amazing aircraft to actually have a look at uh, and work with up close and personal. Uh, I don't know if there's any of these uh, that have survived until the 21st century, but um, this is just uh, an amazing looking aircraft with a big gull wing. Just quickly flick that instruction over. So as we can see here, we're into the wing construction tail plane, getting all that done, all pretty straightforward. Looking there at the angles, they're calling those out for you to make sure you get those right. Okay, so very, very important that we get that angle correct on the tail plane, otherwise it's gonna look a bit skew if. We then come over here to the main floats, and we saw those recesses molded into the underside of the wings to make life that little bit easier for the modeler. Again, a nice touch. Uh, engines, uh, in 172nd, closed up, Okay, you're not going to see a lot there, so you don't have to go crazy with wiring and that type of stuff. Unless, of course, you want to do it, and then you'll know it's there yourself. You probably won't be able to see it, but it's, you know, it's modelling. It's, it's what you, the modeler, uh, is happy to build the model to what standard that you are comfortable with. Uh, and if you want to paint it pink, paint it pink, and it's your model. We can see here the, um, the vents, the engine cowls, either closed or open, depending on what you want to do. So again, lots more options here in this model. So manual number two, starting at stage 16, as I said uh, earlier, options with what propellers you want, either the three or the four blade. We've got all the gun turrets. Make sure you check your references if you're doing the Australian aircraft. Uh, we didn't necessarily have the full gun loadout, uh, but because of how this kit's manufactured, you may choose to, to paint uh, the, the gun turrets uh, in the overall colour to, to make them look like they're more a fixed part rather than a gun turret, if that makes sense. We then come across here, stage 20, uh, we're looking at the undercarriage, uh, we're looking under the wings, etc, etc. You know, not a huge number of steps in the assembly, but it does look really nice. I think this is gonna build up nicely, and I think with a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, and certainly some research, you're gonna be able to get a very nice model straight out of the box. We've got this huge big radar array that goes on um, above and behind the, the cockpit, but that was a post-World War II scenario, and certainly not something uh, on the Australian aircraft. Paint call-outs are here, United States Navy from 1945. Uh, 1947, United States Navy, and then of course the final page here we have the sprue layout. As I said, seven sprues, um, about 220 parts all up, so not a huge number of parts, uh, but in 170 second, more than adequate for uh, a very, very respectable amount of detail out of the box. Kit supplied decals um, for the Martin uh, Mariner are as follows, with the stars and bars, uh, the various BU numbers, um, etc., etc. Very nice, you want to build the American aircraft, fantastic, go for it. That's what's included in the box. Don't forget, of course, you've got the masks, um, very, very important, and um, they'll be a bit of fun, actually, to use. So, I guess for people who like modelling um, RAAF subjects, we had uh, decals 
uh, printed for this airframe. A very, very simple, straightforward paint scheme, overall in foliage green. Um, you could certainly add a little bit of white to the foliage green to, to lighten it up to get a faded uh, effect, that would be fine. Um, so really what you've got is uh, the matte black on the props and the, uh, the, the tyres, foliage green overall, and then we have the decals for the Royal Australian Air Force. So a very, very simple scheme, nothing over the top. This is pretty much a fun build, uh, and I think people will enjoy building it. Like I keep saying, this is going to look great next to a Catalina done up in the markings of the Royal Australian Air Force. Now we can put a Martin Mariner next to it. Uh, the RAAF operated two squadrons uh, of these during the Second World War. And, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have things like a walrus um, or a kingfisher or one of the Dornier boats or even the Short Sunderland, you can get a really, really great collection of important amphibious flying boats used by the Royal Australian Air Force during the period uh, of the Second World War, 1939 through 1945. Now, to complement this model, um, I was working with Scott Taylor from Scale Model Supply at Ballarat and Scott had uh, kindly offered to assist us with a paint set for this model, and here it is. We've got four colours. Uh, it's designed for this RAAF uh, Martin Mariner. The actual part code from Scale Model Supply is the same number as the kit to make it nice and easy. We open it up, we've got four colours. We've got an aluminium, and the idea of that is that you would paint the completed airframe in aluminium. You would then um, possibly use the hairspray technique spray foliage green over the top and then chip the paintwork. Um, remember, if you check your references, you'll see that these flying boats, like any other flying boat, um, the paint scheme on them didn't last terribly long. The moment they started landing and taking off on water, they got a lot of stress, uh, a lot of impact damage on the, uh, the airframe and the paint uh, finishes weathered very, very quickly. We've got an interior green here. Um, for obviously inside the, uh, the bomb bay, the wheel wells, the inside of the cabin, so that's in there. And then we have a, a, a camo black, and you'll use that on the tyres and on the propellers. So all things being equal, um, a nice, simple, user-friendly set from uh, SMS Paints, and that will be available at the same time as the model being dispatched to retail stores and to online retailers. Now initially this paint set will only be available through Hobbies Australia. So the retail store, the online retailer, if they have access to the model kit, they will have access to the paint set as well. Um, SMS Paints, really nicely done. Big shout out to Scott and Katrina at SMS for their ongoing support and cooperation with these types of projects. We've got quite a few more planned for throughout the year, so watch this space. Okay, so there it is, the new Academy Martin Mariner. It's an Australian subject. We've got the link here with the, uh, the SMS Paints. This is gonna be a nice little bundle and with the cold, colder weather coming, this is gonna be a great Easter project. You'll certainly be able to get it in time for Easter. So look, until next time we get the opportunity to catch up, I'm Andrew from Hobbies Australia. Stay safe, take care, and of course, let's build more kits. Bye guys.